Well, hello there. Kumusta po kayo? And welcome to another edition of Paul de Guzman Presents Art. So that foreign language that you just heard is my native language of Tagalog, which is the official language of the Philippines. It's important that I mention that because I wanted to share with you my sort of like origins in terms of where my ideas about contemporary art are coming from. So I've been living in Vancouver for almost 40 years. It's going to be 40 years in 2024, actually. But I was also born in Manila, the Philippines, and that's where I grew up. So between the global south of the Philippines and also the northern hemisphere, that kind of um, affected and also influences my ideas about contemporary art. And what I like to do is I like to sort of go around Vancouver and other places around Vancouver, even elsewhere, and sort of like share with you my experiences about contemporary art because I'm really interested in how we can sort of like um, interpret art in our own way, in our own experiences. And uh, so today, we're actually not in Vancouver, we're actually in a suburb called Burnaby. And before we continue, I just want to um, acknowledge that we are on the unceded and ancestral territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and the Coquitlam nations. Also, we're just facing north. We're supposed to have like a bit of a rainstorm. And as you can see, it's a wonderful fall day. That guy just blowing all that leaves with, uh, with this little leaf blower. It's that time of year. And, um, but we're not going to we're not going to look outside all this time. We're going to go inside and have a look at some work at the SFU Galleries. So the SFU Galleries, SFU stands for Simon Fraser University, and we are actually in the Burnaby Mountain area of um, uh, the Lower Mainland. And we're, gonna go, we're just going to go inside the SFU Gallery here and have a look at the work of Joe Cook and Carol Verlag Cooks. And then we're just going to go in here. Just to put it in context, the SFU galleries comprises of three galleries. There's two galleries downtown and one here in Burnaby Mountain. So we're going to go and have a look at this work. It's a fairly intimate type of work. And um, we're going to go over to this bookshelf over here. It will give you an idea in terms of what this show is all about but let me just give you a little bit of a tactile experience by flipping through one of these books so unlike most gallery exhibitions this one has a very tactile quality to it because joe cook was a person who dealt with a lot of collages and zine culture here in British Columbia. She actually lived on Maine Island, but she passed away in 2021. And um, there is a legacy of her work here in the gallery, and a lot of the works that are actually here are from their archives. There are some vitrines we're just going to go through. And Carol Verlag is also a publishing company that she had. Um, she and a partner, I think her name, his name is Wesley Mulvin, had sort of like um, founded back in 2005. And it's basically a way to actually get a community of artists together to make zines and have them published. But the pieces that we're looking at right now are by Joe Cook. And these particular pieces, I really like these pieces. There's a certain sort of palimpsest sort of quality to these pieces. I love when artists sort of like make drawings on existing sort of um, printed matter, like old book pages and stuff. There's this sense of um, uh, an, an archaeology of mark making that I really quite, really appreciate. And, um, you know, when you're looking at the uh, imagery, there's also this sense of maybe sort of like the comic sort of tradition. Also, when you look at, let's say, works by Donald Batchelor from the 90s, 
and more so we're gonna go and have a look at the pieces that she made as an artist without any collaborations. Now, the entire zine world is actually an international one because like, I know somebody who does a lot of like book fairs and these book fairs tend to be a really good magnet for uh, people who make zines. There are book fairs and zines over in, um, in Shanghai, in Taiwan, in uh, Manila, in Paris, in Brooklyn. And if you are a zine artist, you can be distributing a lot of your work internationally and no one would even know who you are. I think this sense of anonymity about art making is kind of like one of the fundamental things about um, making zines because you don't have to sign them in order to like make, make work. You can just sort of like create a narrative and the entire sense of the zine, it's really very attractive to people who are sort of like writers and wanting to create some form of narrative through the drawings that they do, the drawings that they make. It's also a very community engaged endeavor because a lot of the times you just want to sort of like get together with a bunch of friends, a bunch of artists, and just make art. You know, you don't want to have to sort of like deal with politics, political trends, or who's going to sell what, or what's going to be a popular mode. And from what you can see, in the works of Joe Cook, she pretty much mines a lot of art historical sort of isms. You know, you have expressionism, you have um, pattern decoration, you have expressionist mark makings, you have a lot of different types of styles that you can actually cater to a very intimate format. And that's the one thing that I really, really like about zines that they're, they have this certain tactile quality. And when you really look at it, it's really more a matter of sort of reaching out to a community of people. And um, there was a quote from Joe Cook, almost sort of like lamenting that you don't really need to sort of like create big works of art in order to sort of have an effective um, gesture towards the world right now. Because the thing about it is that, take for example, the current state in the Gaza Strip, wherein the Israeli army had sort of sent off a bunch of flyers overhead, informing the people of Palestine to move south so that they can um, avoid a bombardment. So that entire sense of actually sending out pamphlets is really quite quintessentially an aesthetic that a lot of people in the zine world tend to sort of like utilize, you know? It's about creating intimate works without having to sort of deal with like a Sort of like a grandiose perspective. You can just kind of like do something and then see where it'll take you. I like this installation a lot, this one, with, the, um, with a very particular wallpaper, wall backing. I think that was probably a design from Joe Cook. And then we also have these interesting, more kind of like formalized landscapes. I'm just gonna go through them one at a time. And um, I was actually looking at these, this particular one, not this one here, this particular one I'm looking at earlier. And it kinda reminded me of the studies that Mondrian were, was doing when he was trying to distill a tree to its most basic forms. So when I was mentioning a lot of different types of um, isms or art historical 
sort of like aesthetics and methodologies. You can basically just play with those types of forms. And um, another project that Joe Cook did was with Wesley Mulvin to actually create the um, Pero Verlag sort of publishing house. I guess it's kind of like a publishing house. But what we're looking at right now is a boxed edition of all of the um, all of the Hell's Passport series of works because after a period of time, I don't know how long it takes, but they would actually package them, package them up into a box suite. And um, like I said, a lot of these pieces are actually in the archives of the SFU galleries. So we're just going to go and have a look at the didactic panel. When I mentioned there were three galleries, so this one is the, um, the SFU gallery. The show is on until February 10th, 2024. We're also going to focus on the didactic panel right over here. And um, I'm going to be putting a lot of this information down in the description area, so please refer to that for the gallery's times when they're open, um, website links, and other things that might be pertinent to this show. Um, and also, I'm going to go and look for my favorite piece. I think there it is. And we're going to go and sort of uh, focus on that. This is really quite a quirky piece. I'm not sure why I like this, but I actually do just like it. So also, if you lasted this long, you obviously like the video. So you might as well click the thumbs up button. Also, if you'd like to hear more about this channel, please consider subscribing. It's free, it's not gonna cost you anything. And right now, there's a lot of subscribers that are actually subscribing to the channel. I'm so very happy about that. And um, what else shall we say? I think I'm just gonna leave it at that for now. Thank you very much for tuning in to another edition of Paul Degusman Presents Art. I hope you had a great time viewing the show. We're just going to pan one more time. And on that note, salamat po, and you have a great day. Thank you.